Tonight, the darkest days of the pandemic as the U.S. sets chilling new records. The nation reporting the highest number of COVID deaths and over 200,000 new cases in a single day. And record hospitalizations, over 100,000. And in California, the potential new lockdowns coming linked to ICU space. It comes as President-elect Joe Biden taps Dr. Anthony Fauci to be his chief medical advisor. And our one-on-one -on -one with Dr. Fauci and why he's warning Americans not to travel for Christmas. New information on the manufacturing problems that won't allow Pfizer to supply as many doses of its vaccine this year as it hoped. Also, what Fauci said about trials in children and three former presidents volunteering to get the shot on TV. President Trump lashing out at the attorney general for knocking down his voter fraud claims. Will he fire William Barr? The wildfire exploding in California, supercharged by 70 mile an hour winds. Residents forced to evacuate. A 17 year old charged with killing two men during this summer's protests, ordered to stand trial. A horrifying attack at the sanctuary made famous by Netflix's Tiger King. This is NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Good evening, everyone. The U.S. further slipping into its darkest days, losing over 2,700 people to COVID just yesterday alone. The running tally of infections since the start of the pandemic climbing above 14 million. Tonight, with the nation's hopes pegged to the approval of effective vaccines, Pfizer revealing why it's unable to produce the number of doses it originally hoped for raising questions about follow-on vaccines while a staggering wave of sickness and death grips the country, forcing new stay-at-home orders that could soon affect millions in the nation's largest state. We have it all covered, starting with Miguel Almaguer. Marking the darkest day in the pandemic, a record 2,777 Americans have now died in just 24 hours. But the staggering loss of life comes amid another new record. More than 100,000 are currently hospitalized. What worries all of us so much is that the projections suggest we're just in the beginning of this surge. Surpassing yet another benchmark, more than 200,000 daily infections, the U.S. has now soared above 14 million confirmed cases. And after breaking a pandemic travel record during Thanksgiving, the next surge could be the deadliest. I've seen more people die in the last seven days than I've talked to my own family members. Already overwhelmed by the current flood of patients, hospitals in at least a dozen states are delaying elective surgeries. In Chicago, nurse Alma Abad is connecting elderly patients who are sick and alone in isolation. Your voice, guys. With family on an iPad, the only way to reunite loved ones. Yeah, we love you. Here in California, as ICUs fill up, a new lockdown could be issued in some of the state's biggest cities as beds become scarce. And while more states enact restrictions, massive protests against them grow louder. Authorities say they're trying to save lives, like Leslie and Patricia McWaters. One wouldn't have wanted to be without the other. Married nearly 50 years, the couple died less than 60 seconds apart. It's tough enough to lose one parent, but this was the worst. Tonight, a tragic loss shared by a growing number of families. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. I'm Richard Engel tonight in London. A cautionary look at the challenges of rolling out a coronavirus vaccine for the world in time to save millions. Just yesterday, the UK made headlines, becoming the first country to approve the use of the Pfizer vaccine for the public. Delivery of the initial doses began today. A scaled rollout is expected to start early next week. The US may soon follow pending approval. This summer, Pfizer said it expected to produce up to 100 million doses of vaccine. In November, it cut the estimate in half to 50 million doses. Tonight. We learned why. Citing several factors, a statement from Pfizer said scaling up a vaccine at this pace is unprecedented and we have made significant progress as we have moved forwards in the unknown. Additionally, scale up of the raw material supply chain took longer than expected. In the short term, deliveries are not expected to be impacted. The company says it will still produce more than a billion doses next year. 
But the anticipated supply cut in half before the rollout shows that ending the pandemic will be a scientific and logistical challenge like never before. Richard Engel, NBC News, London. Tonight, an urgent new warning from Dr. Fauci about holiday travel. It comes as President-elect Biden says he'll get the vaccine as soon as Dr. Fauci tells him it's safe and says he's asked Fauci to be his chief medical advisor. Andrea Mitchell spoke with Dr. Fauci today. With the crisis surging, a warning and a plea from Dr. Anthony Fauci. Should people now cancel their travel plans for Christmas? To the extent possible, don't travel, don't congregate together. The effect of Thanksgiving is going to be realized two weeks from now, literally as we're getting into the traveling season for Christmas and Hanukkah. What do we do? It isn't all despair because we have public health measures that can help us and we have a vaccine on the way. And he said older children could start getting vaccinated as soon as March. You won't have to go through the extensive tens of thousands of people in a trial. You show that the vaccine is safe in a few thousand and that it induces the kind of response that's comparable to the response that's protecting the adults. At some point, would, would toddlers, even infants, be vaccinated? You start off, let's say, at 12, and then you work your way down to a, a, a younger group and then a younger group. But millions of adults say they won't take the vaccine. So today, three former presidents said they would be vaccinated on camera to show it's safe. Safety was not compromised and scientific integrity was not compromised. And I would not hesitate for a moment when my turn comes up to get vaccinated and to, my, to have my family vaccinated. Dr. Fauci met for an hour today virtually with a transition health team led by Jeff Zients, expected to be the Biden COVID czar. And Dr. Fauci will now also be part of the Biden team, telling people COVID is not fake. It's not a hoax. It's real. Andrea Mitchell, NBC News, Washington. In our special look at the race for a vaccine, let's pick up on what you just heard about children. There is one trial with children already underway. While parents are obviously anxious to protect their kids, they also have questions. Here's Kate Snow. Of all the drug makers racing for a vaccine, Pfizer is the only one currently testing it in children 12 and older. 16-year-old Benjamin Zavadsky just got his second dose in Texas. What was your motivation to join? A large part of my motivation was to try to help other people. He doesn't know if he got the vaccine or a placebo, but other than a sore arm, he's had no side effects. Johnson & Johnson and Oxford AstraZeneca have not started trials on children yet. Moderna hopes to start testing on 11 to 17-year-olds this month and younger children early in the new year. Dr. Fauci's more optimistic timeline for a child vaccine would be welcome news. The American Academy of Pediatrics has been hoping for one before the next school year begins. We know that once we have a vaccine for children, that will make it safer for children and for the adults in the school system. The vaccine itself might actually be very similar for adults and children because all the vaccines contain genetic code for the protein found in coronavirus, prompting the body to produce antibodies against it. Our bodies can make antibodies against proteins as young as a few weeks of age. So uh, we really may not even need to modify the vaccines much at all. Still, parents have questions. Allison and Brandon McKnight have always given their kids the recommended vaccinations. It will be kind of a little uneasy just because these trials aren't super long. What would you say to parents who might feel nervous that this vaccine process has been rushed? So we believe in the process. The vaccine manufacturers have followed the same process that they do for other vaccines. It's just been accelerated this time. As long as it's safe, the McKnights are on board. If FDA approves it, I, I am all for the vaccine. That way their kids and so many others could see their grandparents again. Kate Snow, NBC News. As public health officials try to figure out who will get the first doses of the vaccine, medical professionals argue residents in hard-hit minority communities should be a priority. NBC's Ron Allen with that story. In a Baltimore neighborhood hard hit by COVID-19, the Reverend Terrace King preaches to a skeptical audience about the new vaccines. I'm not going to be a guinea pig. And so you definitely not going to be the first one I'm in not, line. I'm not. King trying to overcome deep mistrust while at the same time pushing health officials to make the community a priority. This is critical for this community to really make some inroads that can impact 
our longer-term health. With COVID nearly three times more deadly in black and Latino communities, leading African-American medical professionals also speaking up. We are urging our community to take safe and effective vaccines once available. For the minority communities to get access to the vaccines in an equitable way is very important. Dr. Valerie Montgomery Rice agrees with the CDC panel that health care workers should be a priority, but not just doctors and nurses. There's a significant number of black and brown people who work in those facilities and who work on the front line. So we're talking about a very broad definition of health care workers. Yes. Each state decides distribution details. New York promising equity. This has to be an inclusive process. The black, brown, and poor community has paid the highest price for COVID. And to help show the vaccines can be trusted, Dr. Victoria Smith at a hospital near New Orleans volunteered for a clinical trial. I wanted to be a model of uh, for my patients. She's not alone. Some 30% or more of the participants in two clinical trials are from minority groups after stepped-up outreach. Do you think there's going to be acceptance? Many of my patients who have had uh, been affected by COVID, um, losing family members, I think are a little bit more likely to um, accept it. The CDC will release guidance once a vaccine is authorized. Ron Allen, NBC News, New York. And tonight you can see my interview with the top executives of the vaccine makers on a special dateline at 10, 9 central time. President Trump noncommittal tonight on whether he'll keep Attorney General William Barr in that job, plus late developments on that pandemic relief and that so many are waiting for. With that, here's Hallie Jackson. Fuming over widespread fraud that doesn't exist, President Trump tonight has his attorney general in the crosshairs. Do you still have confidence in Bill Barr? Uh, ask me that in a number of weeks from now. Uh, they should be looking at all of this fraud. The president's unhappy after Bill Barr said this week the Justice Department has so far not seen fraud on a scale that could have affected a different outcome in the election. Now, multiple sources familiar with the discussions say President Trump's not ruling out firing Barr, with some in his circle working to persuade the president to hold off. The president's mostly focusing on the election results and not the pandemic that's getting worse in this country. But today he is signaling support for a deal on COVID relief that could help millions of Americans. I think they're getting very close and uh, I want it to happen and I believe that uh, they're getting very close to a deal. Yeah. On Capitol Hill, aides and lawmakers sound more optimistic than they have in months, starting to coalesce around a bipartisan proposal with a $908 billion price tag. It would not include another round of stimulus checks, but would provide nearly $300 billion to help small businesses, $300 a week in additional unemployment benefits, and $35 billion in relief to health care workers. Compromise is within reach. We know where we agree. We can do this. The full details of that bipartisan framework could come on Monday. Lester. Helly Jackson, thank you. A wildfire emergency in Southern California. Officials just announcing 25,000 people are being evacuated from their homes. Our Steve Patterson is there. Overnight, flames racing, fueled by thick, dry brush, tearing through homes and vehicles, leaving a sprawl of scorched earth in their wake. Residents forced to flee the oncoming fire, sprinting through raining embers. The fast-moving bonfire started at a home, but whipped by up to 70-mile-an-hour wind gust, it chewed through thousands of acres, forcing evacuations. A couple of our neighbors, we couldn't get hold of them. So we were really worried about them. Susan Iwamoto says she ran to rescue her neighbor's horses when the flames came rushing toward her home. It came so fast. We barely, barely could get out. Tonight, more than 500 firefighters on the front lines doing all they can to save lives and protect homes, including two who were injured while battling the fire, now being treated in hospital. As winds picked up and the fire threat worsened across the region, SoCal Edison shut off power to nearly 50,000 customers. Now, evacuated residents can only sit and watch, worrying about what the next 24 hours will bring as the firefight rages on. Lester, these erratic winds have been wreaking havoc on the firefighting effort all day long, but there is good news. The winds expected to lay down by tonight. Lester? All right, Steve Patterson, thanks. 
The 17-year-old accused of fatally shooting two men during the protests in Kenosha, Wisconsin this summer has been ordered to stand trial on those charges. Kyle Rittenhouse appearing today virtually before a judge. Rittenhouse remains free on a $2 million bond raised with donations. He's back in court January 5th. And there was a horrifying tiger attack today in Tampa, Florida. It happened at the Big Cat Sanctuary run by Carol Baskin and made famous in the hit Netflix series Tiger King. The tiger nearly tearing off the arm of a volunteer who reached into a gate during feeding time. The woman survived but has serious injuries. In just 60 seconds, the hacking that could seriously affect the critical COVID vaccine supply chain. Tonight, urgent warnings that foreign government hackers and criminal organizations are targeting the global vaccine supply chain. Tom Costello has details. Just as drug companies Pfizer and Moderna are pre-positioning vaccine shipments ahead of FDA approval, evidence tonight that hackers are targeting the critical supply chain that keeps those vaccines cold. A Homeland Security and IBM X-Force alert of a fake email phishing campaign targeting executives and key global organizations, spoofed to appear as if it originates from a real Chinese biomedical company. The IBM team says foreign governments are likely behind the hack, possibly Russia, Iran or North Korea, perhaps hoping to build their own supply chain or disrupt others. If you're able to get into the cold chain, you spoil a batch, there's potentially thousands and thousands of doses that are lost for people to be able to get inoculated. Already, massive cooling rooms are standing by in the supply chain network. As vaccines and therapeutics receive approval, they'll move through cooled distribution centers like this one to ensure that they remain viable. This is a shipment of remdesivir all ready to go. Also tonight, Interpol has issued this global police alert that organized crime networks are targeting COVID-19 vaccines, both physically and online, including efforts to infiltrate or disrupt supply chains, even selling fake vaccines. Cyber experts say hospitals, clinics, and public health offices should act now. Be on guard for suspicious emails. Limit who has access to the systems and be ready to go shields up in the event that there is an intrusion. A call to fortify defenses as countries and criminals seek to profit from a pandemic. Tom Costello, NBC News, Washington. Drivers near Minneapolis got quite the surprise when a small plane swooped in for an emergency landing on the highway. Engine failure, the apparent cause, luckily no one was hurt there. An American Olympic champ has died. Rayford Johnson was the U.S. team's first black captain and won gold in the 1960 decathlon. Years later, he was working with Robert F. Kennedy's campaign when RFK was fatally shot. Johnson helped subdue the assassin. He also acted, appearing in License to Kill. Johnson was 86. Up next for us, in a dark time, how communities are lighting up. There's plenty of light this holiday season, and people can't seem to get enough. Here's Kevin Tibbles. Let there be light. Merry Christmas! <laughs> In the darkness of isolation. Is it good to get out of the house? Yes! <laughs> a thousand families a night together in their cars. <laughs> visit Share the Light, Chicago's drive through fantasy. We brought the whole family, including the hamster. Across the country, pop-up light shows are a breath of fresh air to safely celebrate. At the Chicago Botanic Garden... It's amazing. A labyrinth of light. Well, this is one heck of an experience. <laughs> it certainly is. Here, time tickets ensure a socially distanced tour of lightscape. And it's sold out. People are just joyful to be out and with their families doing something fun and kind of forgetting about the outside world for an hour while they're here. Don't worry. Soon we'll say bah humbug to 2020. <laughs> because there is light at the end of the tunnel. Ellie Christmas. Kevin Tibbles, NBC News, Glencoe, Illinois. Might need your sunglasses. Thanks for watching. I'm Lester Holt. Please take care of yourself and each other. Good night. Hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.